Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be making a putty matrix. Uh, just using this VP putty mix from uh, Henry Shine. It's kind of a low tech product, so you don't have to get anything that's terribly expensive. Uh, yes, you see me not wearing gloves. I've washed my hands before uh, doing this next part, but when you're mixing these materials, you wanna do this without gloves on. And so this putty matrix, it actually comes in two types of a catalyst and a base. You're gonna get about equal amounts of each and then uh, just simply mix them together. Uh, pretty simple process, just like kind of mixing up Play-Doh. Uh, you have about, uh, maybe about 45 seconds or so of working time to get this thing put together before it starts to show signs of setting up. But you'll see here, I'm mixing this and it's probably taking me about, it's gonna take me about 20, 25 seconds or so to kind of mix the blue and the white completely together to a homogeneous mix. Um, and so just kind of working it back and forth. You can see on the uh, bracket table is the actual, the wax up uh, that we're gonna be taking a mold of. So we took a 3D camera, or sorry, a 3D Itero scan of the patient's mouth and uh, sent it to the, to the lab and they put wax on the teeth. Now the wax attached to these models, these resin models, isn't really that tight. So you have to kind of be careful with it, but there's the wax up. Here it is, like you can see, I kind of roll into a ball and they kind of flatten it out. And now I'm just kind of squishing it down on top of the model and making sure I spread it across uh, the teeth, of course, that are gonna be prepped, but also extending up to the gum line and beyond on those teeth, uh, the lingual surface. I wanna make sure I get that gum tissue and also across some of the other teeth that will not be prepped. That gum surface on the buccal, lingual, and the unprepped teeth are gonna serve as stops when I put that into the mouth when the, when the case is prepped. You can see I'm kind of working it right now. I'm kind of taking this amount. Again, I kind of guessed on how much volume to have, but now that I'm kind of putting it in place, I want to be pushing from the lingual, pushing it across the occlusal or the incisal surface and pushing any excess out towards the facial. As you'll see here in a moment later on in the video, when I want to trim the excess, it's gonna be much easier, I think, from the facial uh, to, make that, to make that work right. So now you can see I'm just kind of working it into position. And, um, and then in just a moment, I'm just gonna kind of let it set and do its final amount so I can come back and trim it. Um, know that you know I put this up onto the facial surfaces and the lingual surface, there is part of the scan or part of the mold rather that is gonna be not representative of the patient's true tissues. Um, anyway, so here I am now, I'll discuss that here in just a second, uh, but put the gloves back on. Of course, we're gonna disinfect this before we take it to the patient's mouth, but at this point, it just as a layer of safety, I'm gonna be wearing the gloves because in a moment I'm gonna trim it. But now I'm gonna be removing the putty matrix from the wax up. And you gotta be careful because again, like I said, that wax doesn't stick very tightly, so you have to lift it off gently. If it does come off, it'll just have to be reapplied uh, with some kind of sticky wax, maybe with some glue, whatever you guys wanna use that's not gonna cause a problem, but you wanna make sure that you get that wax back on there. And so now you can see this putty matrix, this blue matrix is really thick on the facial, and I need to uh, trim that back. Uh, but I'm not just going to trim the thickness. I also want to trim any excess that went too far vertical. Because like I said, when you do a scan, when, the, when it mills out this model, you're going to have the, the teeth, you're going to have the gum line, you're going to have a few millimeters of the actual gum tissue. But beyond that, you're going to see it just gets kind of flat, like it's been machine processed. And that's, of course, not part of the patient's true anatomy. And that's what I'm trimming away right now. I'm trimming away that process part of the model that doesn't match up with the patient's true anatomy. So I'm reducing it vertically, but I'm trying to stay away from the gum line. I want to preserve that, of course. And now I'm taking the excess thickness that's on the lingual side and just going to be just kind of trimming that back. And again, this is a scalpel blade, so it's very sharp. So be careful with that so you don't pull, pull, and all of a sudden it slips and it cuts your finger, hence the gloves for the extra added layer of safety. Um, and just basically trimming. If just kind of thinking about as we're trimming, we want this material to be thin enough that it's going to be comfortable for the patient to have them you know, wear this for the few minutes it's going to take for the material to set, uh, the temporary that is. But um, you, you need it thick enough that it's not flimsy. So there's a little bit of an art that goes to this of when you're pressing it into place and now with it, when you're trimming it to make it both thick enough to be you know, sturdy enough to hold its position uh, to make the temporary, but also thin enough that you know you can actually insert it. So a little bit of trimming that goes on here and feel free to speed up the video because there's not a whole lot to comment on uh, from this point forward. And then once we get done with the trimming, uh, I kind of pick it up to what happens next.
Okay, in just a moment now, I'm going to put light body PVS material into the impression. Um, before I do that, however, um, I'm going to take a, a pen here in just a second. Okay, I'm going to take a pen, and I do this with all these cases. I, I mark right between 8 and 9. The reason I do that is that when you go try to insert this putty either onto the model or especially in the patient's mouth, it can be sometimes difficult to line it up left and right on where it should go. And if you could follow that 8 and 9 mark, or that mark that's for 8 and 9, match it up with the 8 and 9 of the model or the mouth, it just makes it so much easier, more predictable for it to go in. Again, I'm taking the light body material and just kind of filling up the internal uh, to make sure I'm kind of filling up these teeth, probably 75% full. Uh, take the model, and now I got eight and nine. It lines up with that mark. Squeeze it together. The excess, of course, comes out. Pressing it, just making sure it's nice and firm. Makes a little bit of a mess. And now we just let it set. Okay, it's now set. And uh, we're going to separate this again. Now that it's a tighter fit, there's a greater chance that the wax might come off of some of the teeth and you'll see this in, in this example it actually does happen but still you want to try your best to try to peel this off the teeth uh, without much force so you can see i'm not just pulling away i'm actually peeling it from the gum line just to kind of help loosen it up and just lower my chances of anything breaking off of the model and in just a moment you're going to see it comes free okay there it came out but you can see look, there's some wax and it kind of came off so thankfully at this point, I really don't need the wax up for anything for fabrication purposes, but uh, we're still gonna of course hold on to that. And if you see as an assistant, if you see that happen, just take that wax up and put it in a box so those wax pieces don't go missing. And again, it's a part of uh, trimming again, just taking that excess amount. In this case, it's probably gonna be more of just the vertical stuff that went up onto the processed part of the model and just, uh, just trimming that back. And again, this is kind of boring from here on out. So it's just basically make a putty matrix so that when we go to the patient's mouth and we have this wax up, we can make some really nice temporaries with minimal trimming and cleanup after they're in place. And I always try to do a, what I call a shrink wrap or a single step temporary material uh, technique where we actually bond the temporaries onto the teeth. I think I have a couple other videos here on YouTube that go over that technique. But uh, the patients don't have to worry about these things falling off because they just, they stay on there. The downside is of course, you have to cut these things off when, when the patient comes back. But it's a small price to pay if you have a happy patient who doesn't have temporaries falling off while they're waiting for a few weeks for the final ones to arrive back from the lab. So having well fit temporaries um, is very important uh, for the patient to be, um, you know, kind of get an idea of what their smile is going to look like. This is wax up, kind of gives them a smile preview, a prototype of where they're heading. So um, again, I take that pen and just mark eight, nine as, um, as I'm going to need that when I go to the mouth. And so now we'll take a closer look and it can represent the detail of the gum line of the facial lingual incisal. It's all captured right there. And that is your putty matrix.